remember feeling like my life was finally on track and it was in a place where most people would think their lives are derailing and it's when I decided to drop out of college. I got Balenci's in the bathroom. I used to be fiending for them, dreaming in the classroom. Turned in my exam right then, I knew it'd be the last room for school. I walked into for my potential getting past due. That sounds risky. Like The greater risk is to not do so and forever be someone that people walk on top of. I was born March 9th, 1997 in Montgomery, Alabama to two Nigerian immigrant parents. They really valued education, so me being like that artistic kid who painted on walls and like always wanted to do something fun rather than wanting to like sit and be a part of curriculum, they did not love that. <laughs> and on top of that, you might think she's kind of gay. Like, what's going on there? Like, they definitely made me feel like there was something wrong. I was never really a problem child. I felt like one, and I've had to unlearn that in adulthood. They didn't really know that the things they were seeing, the traits that they were trying to stifle, would end up being a part of my career. Okay, this one's for the kids with depression, the ones whose parental expectations got them stressing. I've always wanted to change the world, and I've always felt like the vehicle to do that was my music. Remind me every single night spent writing raps up in my closet. I ain't sleep much, but it paid off because it got me here. When her page blew up, dropping out and pursuit of her dreams, what she felt like she had to do. I sat my parents down on the couch and was like, hey, so look, I'm not going back. <laughs> Let me stay here for like a year. I will get a job. I will do whatever I need to do in order to make sure that I get where I want to go. I kept doing verses and I kept trying to push myself to be better and better and better. I was going viral all the time, but I wasn't making any money. I was like dead broke, nothing to show for it. And that gets a lot like into your head about like, what am I really doing? What is this for? That was really, really, really sad. I got to a really dark place. It was a mess. And from that moment, I was just like, yeah, no, it's time. I need to be okay. I need to get to a space where I can work towards something. And I moved to New York. So you're in New York and you do the Kanye verse. What happens next? Uh, the world opens up for me. <laughs> the day that the Kanye verse blew up, I was supposed to be going to Iowa for this festival. I think that Festival was paying me, what, 250 I didn't get to watch it happen. I didn't have any service. I was in the air, and I didn't realize the weight of what I had just done. Someone on Twitter had found my cash app somehow. They're like, I'm sending you $5 because that verse is so fire. And I was like, yo, that's hilarious, but thank you. And I remember I replied to it, and everybody else was like, what, what's her cash app? And then people just started flooding my cash app with money. And if there's not like a God moment that I can think of in my head, people just started sending me money. And I was like, yo, what the is this? Like, y'all don't have to do this. I'm sending you back. They're like, no, like, let us bless you. They didn't know that I didn't know how I was gonna eat that night. But by the end of that whole little spell, like people would tell me like, a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars, and after that, of course, like, you better you bet your ass. I kept going. I've always wanted to change the way people perceive emotion because of, for me, going back to childhood, so many of my emotions were deemed wrong. Looking back on Baby Chica, it's really funny because I think she's arguably stronger than I am now. <laughs> like, I was so resilient and I didn't even know it. And so looking back, I'm like, yo, that's a boss ass b Like, I can't, I, I thank my younger self for the life I have now so often. 